If you follow my channel, you know I'm all about that base, about that base, about that fire base, no sequel. Because honestly, I'm just too lazy to build a back end that won't get hacked to pieces as soon as it goes live. I find it much easier to sell my soul to Google in exchange for a real-time app with one line of JavaScript. I'm no Apex Alpha GigaChad building my own back end in Rust just to serve five monthly active users. A back end as a service is an extremely complicated product for a company to offer. You need to take a bunch of disparate cloud infrastructure pieces like databases and servers, then write SDKs for multiple platforms and multiple languages, then secure and document everything for the lowest common developer. It's not easy, and for many years the only game in town was Firebase. But that's not the case in 2023. I tried out five different Firebase alternatives to find out which Bass is best, including Amplify, MongoDB Realm, Supabase, Enhost, and AppWrite. We'll compare popularity, pricing, features, and potential drawbacks of each one of these platforms. But first, I want to take a look at Firebase to give you a baseline for comparison. Its web SDK gets over a million downloads per week, but is even more popular on mobile and is used by many popular game studios. Firebase has a ton of features like analytics, crashlytics, performance monitoring, and so on, but the three most critical for app developers are user authentication, database, and server-side functions. These infrastructure pieces are hosted by Google Cloud Platform, and what Firebase does is provide SDKs for front-end applications like JavaScript, iOS, Android, Flutter, Unity, etc., so developers can access them without having to architect, deploy, and maintain their own server-side code, which either requires a ton of manual labor or trillions of dollars to hire engineers to do it for you. When it comes to pricing, Firebase has a generous free tier, then authentication is always free, with the exception of phone and multi-factor auth, but the Firestore database and cloud functions scale up based on usage. In some cases, it can be expensive at scale, but it really depends on the application, and you should carefully calculate pricing based on your anticipated growth. Most of my projects grow by a factor of zero, which makes Firebase very affordable. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks when using Firebase is that you're locked in. Most notably, Firestore is a proprietary proprietary database, which means if you ever want to use a different database, you'd have the big undertaking of migrating that data somewhere else. Firebase is just like cocaine. It feels great to get things done quickly, but trying to come off of it is not very fun. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. On Firebase, we can flip a switch for Google authentication, then implement basic OAuth with a single line of code. We can then listen to the auth state in real time, then take the user ID to make queries to the database. Not only is the code incredibly simple, but when data on the server changes, it magically updates the UI. Basically, you get real time apps for free. And that brings us to AWS Amplify, which is Amazon's answer to Firebase. It has a very impressive list of features that include things like analytics, predictions, and notifications that aren't found on many of the other options on this list. Its primary database is DynamoDB, which I found to be pretty painful to work with in the past. However, Amplify automatically creates a GraphQL API for your data. It even has a no-code tool to define relationships for your data, and it is possible to also connect a relational database to your API. In addition, you can make your data search with Elasticsearch, which is a big missing feature in Firebase. User authentication is handled by AWS Cognito, which feels a bit more mature than what Firebase offers. Most importantly, you can create user groups, then control what those user groups have access to in your project. Like Firebase, pricing is pay-as-you-go, so you'll need to carefully calculate usage to figure out how quickly your money will evaporate. And you can also expect vendor lock-in here if you use proprietary AWS products. It has SDKs for all the major web and mobile platforms, and is really the only one on this list that challenges the popularity of Firebase with about 400,000 weekly downloads. Now, if we jump into some code, you'll notice a much different developer experience. Amplify relies heavily on code generation to create the backend API for your data. This dumps a bunch of code into your project that you'll have to constantly sync with AWS, but it creates a great developer experience for data fetching. Because you have a GraphQL schema that provides IntelliSense, but at the same time, you don't need to manually write GraphQL queries. You get nice, simple one-liners just like the Firebase SDK. And that brings us to our next platform, Supabase. It's been around since Y Combinator Season 20, and has the core features you would expect, like auth, file storage, and serverless functions, but its main distinguishing feature is the database. It uses the open source Postgres, a relational database. This provides several advantages. For one, it provides a more flexible and industry standard way to model data. And two, you don't have to worry as much about vendor lock-in, because you can host a Postgres database anywhere. One drawback, though, is that there are some missing features, like website hosting, which means you'll likely also need something like Vercel and Netlify, and its SDKs are really only focused on the web, with the exception of tools like React Native, Flutter, and Ionic. They don't seem to be too focused on the iOS, Android side of things. It has gotten pretty popular on the web, with over 40,000 weekly downloads currently. When it comes to pricing, there is a free tier, but you're limited to only two projects, and they'll sleep after inactivity. For a serious project, pricing starts at $25 per month, but it contains enough usage to take you up to 100,000 monthly active users, then turns into pay-as-you-go after that. Overall, it's a great deal when you compare it to pricing for relational databases 
as elsewhere. The real magic of Supabase, though, is that it makes relational databases easy to work with. It gives us a browser-based tool to manage our data and integrates nicely with user authentication, where we can implement row-level security policies to control who has access to our data. And I found its JavaScript SDK very enjoyable to work with. It's a lot like the original Firebase SDK, where you use dot notation to grab the data you want and then perform operations on it. What's cool, though, is that it also supports GraphQL, so you have that option as an alternative. Postgres also supports things like full-text search and can return the count of a table, which annoyingly is not possible in Firebase. When it comes to real-time access to data, you'll have to opt in manually. It doesn't just work out of the box, but once you do that, you can easily subscribe to it from your front-end code with the SDK. Next on the list, we have Enhost, the open-source Firebase alternative with GraphQL. This project is built on top of Hasura, a very cool platform I've broken down in the past that can take a relational database and turn it into a GraphQL API. Pricing is very similar to Supabase, free to play around with, and 25 bucks a month to get serious. If we look at NPM downloads, it doesn't have a ton of traffic, but Hasura is extremely popular, so that metric doesn't really paint the full picture in this case. The UI is nice and intuitive, and allows you to visualize all your database records here in the browser. What's special about Enhost, though, is that your Postgres database is also a GraphQL API. That means you can play around with queries and mutations right here in the browser as well. It's important to point out, though, that you can't do everything from the Enhost dashboard. In some cases, you'll need to access Hasura to do things like update your database permissions and security rules. That might feel somewhat awkward, but they do a good job of documenting everything. Now let's take a look at some code. Enhost has first-class support for React and provides hooks to perform authentication with a single line of code. When it comes to database queries, things will get a little more complicated because at that point, you'll be working with GraphQL and Apollo Client. These are awesome technologies, but there is a learning curve and the code tends to be a bit more verbose than what you would expect with Firebase. For example, to fetch items from a database, we first need to go to Hasura and add the table and columns to the schema, then define permissions to allow access to that data, and we probably also want to go to the GraphQL Explorer to test out the query before we add it to our code. We can then run it with the use query hook provided by Apollo Client. On one hand, this code feels a bit more robust than Firebase, but there's also more friction if you're just prototyping something quickly. Ultimately, Enhost feels like a very close competitor to Supabase, but if you're into GraphQL, you'll likely have a preference for the way Enhost does things. Next up, we have AppWrite, which is another open source backend for web and mobile developers. It has the same infrastructure pieces as Enhost and Supabase, but has SDKs for both the web and mobile. As of today, it's not a commercial product yet, which means you would need to self-host it, which can be done with a one-click install on DigitalOcean, but they are coming out with a fully managed service called AppWrite Cloud in the near future. It's free and open source, so you don't have to worry about vendor lock-in, but paradoxically, free and open source can actually be more expensive because you don't have a cash-burning startup willing to lose money on you to pad its growth numbers to raise more money in the future. In terms of popularity, the JavaScript SDK doesn't have a ton of downloads, but the Docker image has over 5 million pulls. Go ahead and pull it to spin up the AppWrite dashboard in your browser. It has an impressive list of authentication methods, but the most interesting thing to me is the database. It's a NoSQL document database, kind of like MongoDB or Firestore, and I found it very easy to use, but it also felt kind of mysterious to me. I did some research and found that it's based on MariaDB, which is actually a relational database and a fork of MySQL. Basically what they're doing is giving you a NoSQL API to work with a traditional SQL database. This is not unheard of and was inspired by previous work from Wix. If we jump into the code, we'll find a lot of easy one-liners for authentication and database management like you'd expect from a platform like this. One thing it doesn't support though at this point is GraphQL. In any case, AppWrite does feel like a tool with a lot of potential. And that brings us to the final product on this list, MongoDB Realm. As you may know, MongoDB is the most popular document-oriented database out there, and Realm was a startup that was acquired a few years ago that focused on providing tools for mobile developers. Today, it can sync data from MongoDB Atlas to any web or mobile platform. The JavaScript SDK doesn't have a ton of downloads, but it's highly focused on mobile platforms, so that doesn't paint the whole picture. Pricing will primarily depend on how you use MongoDB through Atlas, which can either be serverless or dedicated. Then you have additional pay-as-you-go pricing for compute time on things like serverless functions. If we go to the dashboard, we'll find features like authentication, although it does feel a bit limited compared to other options. The real power is in the database and the ability to sync it with front-end applications. It's also capable of generating a GraphQL API from your database. When it comes to accessing data, things feel a little more complex than Firebase because you'll also need to think about a schema to define Realm objects, which translate MongoDB data into something you can actually use in your application. Once you have it set up, it does make real-time subscriptions very easy to manage, and you can also use GraphQL and Apollo if you prefer. Overall, I think Realm is a great option, but may feel a little more advanced compared to some of the other options we've looked at, and it's a no-brainer if you're already using MongoDB. Before we 
wrap up, there's one other platform that I want to mention called Parse. It's been around since 2013 and was acquired by Facebook and subsequently shut down a few years later. It's now open source and still actively maintained today, but I just haven't tried it myself. Ultimately, nothing is perfect and it all comes down to trade-offs. The only thing that matters is that you get your app shipped. Just marry the best looking one and hope it all works out in the end. But don't ever get divorced because then you'll be paying alimony and child support to your legacy apps. And finally, if you want to see more advanced tutorials about these platforms, subscribe to my brand new channel, Beyond Fireship. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.